Coming up on Mobile Learning in the Classroom, Monitoring Technologies. Hi, my name is Guy Training. And I'm Zoe Falls. And this is Mobile Learning in the Classroom from Tech Edge. And today we're talking about monitoring technology use. And a lot of teachers and instructors are really concerned about technology use in the classroom. Zoe just told me that uh, one of our instructors asked note for no technology in the classroom, which is something you can do. Although it can be very problematic, especially if you do want to use some capacities that technology can add. And one of and the one other thing that I want to add at all ages, but definitely with younger kids, is we actually want to teach kids to be able to monitor their own technology use and make decisions, smart decisions about technology. And we as adults struggle with it sometimes. Do I need to really look at my phone right now? And there are lots of projects and ideas around that. So if you uh, look, for example, at Common Sense Media, they've uh, had this campaign about uh, technology-free dinners, which I go. think is a really good idea. So you really are looking constantly for ideas around uh, monitoring technology use and being really purposeful about when you're using it and when you're not. And this is exactly what we're, as teachers, we need to teach. Because these kids are going in a very technology-rich world and it's not going to get less so. So they need some strategies to think about when is it appropriate, when is it not, how do I actually disengage, which is really hard. Very hard. So, uh, the first thing that I see a lot of teachers do when they're using technology on a regular basis in their classroom is what I call flaps down, and you can call it many other things, and that's basically taking and making sure that the screen is actually off, and that's partially because as a teacher, if you're, sitting, if you're standing in front of your kids, you can't see what they're seeing on their screens, and that's a way to make sure that wherever they are, even if they're not really on anything, that they shouldn't be, they're not looking at their screen, they're looking at you, they're looking at somebody else presenting or a video or anything else. And with iPads, you just ask it to be face down. It's the same way. It doesn't mean necessarily it's turned off, it usually isn't, but it does mean that your, your uh, focus goes somewhere else. Okay, and you have one. So when I was teaching last semester, I had several of my students ask me if I used pocket points. All and right. after I stared at them, with a blank face, they were like, no, you don't understand. And they showed me Pocket Points, which is an app that they can get for mm -hmm. their phone. And it's Apple or Android. And mm -hmm. you download it. And what it does, and I'm going to show here how it works from their, from their web page, is you open up Pocket Points when you're in class. Mm. And I'm downloading it. And it monitors when you're not using your phone. Mm -hmm. So right now I have Pocket Points running. And if I were to turn my phone on, it would stop counting and right. so it does it based on time and as you can see here it fills up this little present box so you can monitor how long mm -hmm. you've not been using your phone and what I noticed with my students when they were telling me about it is yeah. they would do it for specific rewards mm -hmm. so as you accrue points and you see here where it shows the gift page and it targets to where your local community is so here in Lincoln um, one of the things that I noticed is you can get discounts on toppers and, you know, oh. money off. And mm -hmm. I like toppers quite a bit, so that was a very exciting thing for me. So you have <laughs> goals that you can set for yourself. Yeah. And as a teacher, I think especially maybe for college-age students, it's, a, it's an easier way to present yeah. if you have a specific time where you're not using their phones or if you want them on a laptop and not on their phone. It's a way where they can still do something that most of them found mm -hmm. just through their peer group, but encouraging them to practice, I don't know, what you want them to do with technology yeah. in your classroom. And they, you know, I see them setting up competitions mm -hmm. with each other and seeing how long they can go, even outside of class. So if they're just in the library. Yeah. So it doesn't just have to be restricted to in a class. And because it's on their phone, the GPS tracks if they're on campus or off campus. Mm -hmm. So they register with their school, and if they're not on campus, Pocket Points doesn't work. When they're on campus, it does work. And what I like about that, if we extend that idea and find other apps that do something similar, is that it can actually be used just to, uh, for example, for doing homework, for mm -hmm. other things. So there are some interesting ways to think about how you can use some kind of a point system 
to support kids being off because it is hard to disengage once you're engaged with your phone. So finding ways to manage that is really, really important. Another way that you can, as an instructor or as a teacher, uh, at any grade level, really monitor technology use is by using your location. So in a classic classroom, the teacher stands in front of the kids and if you have phones or uh, iPads or laptops of any kind, Chromebooks, you don't see what they're seeing. Mm -hmm. And they can easily, and they think they're sneaking around, <laughs> really as a teacher, you know that they're not paying attention, but you can't see. And one of the things I'm seeing a lot of teachers is reorganizing where they are in the classroom mm -hmm. or the reorganizing the classroom. For example, yes. I've seen a lot of college instructors, if there's technology use that you want during class, for example, if you're teaching writing and you're taking some time, we're doing discussion and then each person goes mm -hmm. back to machine and write, the, the desks are actually organized on the outside and the technology is on that outside where the desks are. So when everybody's discussing things, they're actually in kind of a circle without any desks or anything else. And then when it's time to write and use technology, everybody turns to the outside and now you can see that they're engaged and they're engaged at the appropriate time. And in other classrooms, especially in middle schools I work with, what they're doing is they're, all the kids are sitting and you talk at the beginning of class in the front and then the teacher moves all of her stuff or his stuff to the, what would be traditionally the back of the classroom so they can see that everybody's engaged while they're actually responding electronically to what kids are doing. So it's a way to keep an eye without being too policey about it. Because there are uh, apps, there are uh, systems that are actually designed for a teacher, for example, if you've got Chromebooks or, or laptops or, or even iPads, to be able to see what they're doing. Uh, Hipara is one such example. I, for me, as a teacher, that makes me more a policeman and less of an instructor, mm -hmm. and I don't want to be that. For some people, it seems uh, the way to go. I don't want to police that much, but I want them to know that I can see what they're doing, and well, that there, helps. There are low-tech tricks I mean, that yeah. I know I've used in class, even if it's something as simple as I make them stand up mm -hmm. and move in the room. Yeah. And you know, their, their response to, to a question has to be physical. Yeah. And they get up and move on a, on a spectrum, and that's how they, how they respond. Or I've done putting myself at the back of the classroom, because in the room I teach in, that happens mm -hmm. to be where the whiteboard is. Using a whiteboard in a technology yeah. class really, really bothers them at first, because they yeah. don't quite understand what's Why? going on. Yeah. And because, of, because I've shifted the focus and sort of the, the feel of the class, mm -hmm. they almost engage just to figure out what's going on. Yeah. And it is really important, like anything with uh, any expectations, is to be very clear about your expectations, what's, what's allowed and what's not. Mm -hmm. um, because kids will try and test the limits and you want to be sure, and that's at any age, in any classroom, you want to be sure that you're putting those boundaries around them. So today on mobile learning in the classroom, we talked about really monitoring and really shifting kids to self-monitoring and technology use. And we'll see you next time on mobile learning in the classroom.